Well, hello, I'm Dr. Steven Cianti, director of the Cianti Prostate Center in Sarasota, Florida, and I am a focal therapy prostate cancer specialist. I've been performing focal therapy for prostate cancer now for 23 years. My first focal therapy procedure was with cryotherapy all the way back in 2002. I incorporated high food treatment in 2006, and in 2020, Tulsa joined our program. I have had the privilege of caring for over 3,000 focal therapy patients over the past 23 years. Focal therapy, and particularly focal HIFU, is now gaining increased acceptance by urologists, and many urologists are now rushing to learn this procedure and have begun offering focal HIFU treatment to their patients. However, as two recent patient encounters will demonstrate, to get the kind of outcomes that really produce excellent treatment effect and minimal side effects require significant experience. And consequently, poor outcomes are often related to surgeon inexperience. In the first case, a gentleman called our center who had been treated several months ago at a prestigious East Coast based university center. He had a Gleason 7 cancer at the left base of the prostate, which should have been a fairly easy treatment. However, at two and a half months post-treatment, he began to leak urine from his rectum and I suspect had developed a dreaded fistula complication. Now it's interesting, we saw that 15, 20 years ago when HIFA was first introduced, but personally in all my years of experience, I've never had a patient with this complication. Worse yet, his PSAs hadn't decreased at all, and on MRI imaging, he had a persistent tumor that really looked like it had gotten no treatment at all based on MRI criteria. And so this poor patient had a persistent tumor and a severe complication. I can't tell why this happened, but I suspect that this is a combination of, you know, some technical errors as well as inexperience. The same week, another patient called our center, now from the west coast of the United States, with a similar Gleason 7 single-sided tumor, and at one year out, he had a PSA that never went down, in fact, was significantly rising. His MRI demonstrated persistence of his tumor essentially unchanged in its same location, suggesting that there was inadequate energy delivered to the tumor area. So to get the kind of outcomes that we talk about and you'll see published in some of the leading literature in the United States, it really does require a tremendous amount of technical expertise and attention to very precise, careful conduct of the treatment. So what makes the Cianti Prostate Center different? Well, for one, I've got 23 years of experience in delivering focal therapy treatments. My HIFU experience goes back 19 years. And this experience has been marked by continuous technical as well as procedural evolution. Two major techniques that I've developed that I employ involve increasing the energy on the tumor as well as protecting the urethra. Now we learned many years ago that success with ablation or focal therapy is dependent upon what's called the thermal dose. That's the dose of energy delivered over the tumor over time. The, the higher the thermal dose, the more effective is the ablation and the more effective the treatment is as a cancer control treatment. We learned that amplifying or escalating that thermal dose made a big difference. Now, nine years ago, I introduced the triple M or MMM technique, and that's the MRI mapped energy modulated technique. And I noticed a significant improvement in the ability to control the tumor as well as deliver a safe treatment. Now with continued technical innovation and improvement in MRI imaging, and MRI to ultrasound integration. I've now refined that and now call that the MRI targeted 
dose escalation technique, MRI targeted dose escalation. And that involves a precise integration of the MRI map into the ultrasound images, the creation of the index or target lesion, the creation of a halo or a safety zone around the lesion, and then maximizing the dosage of energy to that area, and importantly, minimizing the dose of energy to the surrounding structures. We also learned that protecting the urethra is extremely important. Many years ago, no attempt was made to do that. And as a consequence, the urethra sustained a significant amount of heat and energy, which resulted in a high chance of urinary retention and urinary obstruction or stricture. This was really a hindrance to the success of HIFU. I've learned over the years that to avoid this problem, it's necessary to minimize the energy close to the urethra, but very important, the technique I use in addition to minimizing the energy is keeping the urethra cool. So a urethral cooling technique that I utilize provides total protection to the urethra and that problem of prolonged urinary retention, urethra blockage and stricture has gone away. So in addition to these technical refinements and technological improvements, one of the reasons that HIFU is gaining popularity is that worldwide research has now been published documenting that HIFU is in fact a safe and effective treatment. I want to highlight one very recent trial for you. This is called the HIFI trial, H-I-F-I -I trial. Now this is digitally published in November of 2024 and just published in the journal European Urology in May of 2025. This was a prospective non-randomized trial conducted in France of only 2,300 patients were involved. And these patients had either prostatectomy or HIFU and they were compared in this trial. At 30 months post-treatment, 90% of patients treated with HIFU, either whole gland or focal HIFU, had avoided any subsequent additional definitive therapy, such as radiation, surgery, or hormonal therapy. This compares to 86% of patients who underwent prostatectomy avoiding additional therapy. Therefore, the salvage treatment-free survival rate after a HIFU procedure at 30 months was not inferior or in any way worse than the salvage treatment-free survival rate after prostatectomy. And very importantly, patient reported outcomes suggested a more favorable outcome regarding urinary continence and erectile function in the HIFU patients compared to the prostatectomy patients. So I think the debate about whether or not HIFU is safe and effective, I think really continues to go on, but there's tremendous data today and more and more published data that's available that tells us now after 20 plus years of this treatment, it appears to be non-inferior, safe, and in the right patient, a very effective uh, approach to treating prostate cancer. Now, if you'd like to see the abstract from this study, I'm gonna provide the link for you below. Now, to achieve some of the excellent outcomes that we've just talked about, experience matters. So what kind of experience? Well, experience in MRI is critically important. The urologic hyphen specialist surgeon must be an expert in reading MRI and understand the quality of those MRI images because that becomes the ultimate roadmap and the most important aspect in designing a treatment. Expertise in MRI targeted biopsy techniques, very important. Understanding how to perform a proper MRI guided or fusion biopsy, and then understanding how to interpret the biopsy results, and then using 
software and having the infrastructure to integrate those biopsy results to the MRI images to create this 3D map of where the cancer is based on the MRI abnormality and based on where the significant cancer locations are. Because without a proper map, proper treatment is not possible. We talked about some of the focal therapy techniques, but experience in delivering that focal therapy technique so that the maximum amount of energy can be targeted to the tumor and then those critical structures can be avoided. So some of these complications we heard about 20 years ago really should be, should be a thing of the past. Knowing how to follow a patient up, having careful and close follow-up, understanding with experience what the PSA numbers mean, how to interpret the MRI images after a procedure, and then understanding if there's a risk of a recurrence of the cancer, and then how to deal with that whether a secondary additional uh, ablation procedure might be necessary, because sometimes it is, or whether in fact going to something more definitive like radiation might be required, but that all requires experience. And finally, this requires an investment in time, focus, and attention. Being a focal therapy specialist is not a part-time job. Integrating this tremendous amount of technology, understanding how to deliver the energy, and then how to follow up the patients as part of a comprehensive program that literally has taken me years to develop and implement. As we said earlier, focal therapy is now gaining tremendous acceptance in the United States and in fact worldwide. In fact, this year, in April of 2025, at the annual meeting of the American Urologic Association, one of the major what are called plenary sessions featured a talk by my good friend and colleague, Dr. Tanej up at NYU, who addressed the topic, is focal therapy ready for prime time? Now he reviewed the published data, some of the things we've been talking about, some of the outcomes, and his conclusion is yes, it is ready for prime time, but, but it must be done well. And this requires, according to Dr. Tanasia, careful candidate selection, careful treatment planning, an aggressive treatment of that target or index lesion, and hence our MRI targeted dose escalation technology, careful and experienced follow-up to recognize if a cancer has recurred, and then an early recognition of that with moving on to secondary or salvage therapies. So yes, we're in an era where focal therapy has moved to the forefront of interest in prostate cancer treatment. But as my good friend and scholar, Dr. Tanasia says, it must be done well. So in conclusion, What's the Cianti Prostate Center difference? I have MRI experience dating back personally to 2008, and I review every single MRI study in every single one of my patients, either before or after treatment. MRI fusion biopsy is so critically important in the diagnostic process. I've been doing MRI fusion targeted biopsy going back to 2010 when it was first FDA approved, and I've done thousands of these targeted fusion biopsies. My focal therapy experience, as we've talked about, goes back to 2002. Remember, with cryotherapy, with the ability to be involved with well over 3,000 patients to date. In over 20 years, I really learned how to follow up appropriately our focal therapy patients and provide excellent long-term care for a patient uh, who have undergone this, this procedure. A well-known author, Malcolm Gladstone, wrote a book several years ago called Outliers. And the premise of his book was that the pinnacle of performance in any human endeavor seems to be 10,000 hours of experience. Whether you're Ted Williams hitting a 400 average baseball um, experience, or whether you're you know, a, a accomplished, seasoned, um, 
fighter pilot or an experienced pianist or musician. That 10,000 hours seems to be critical. Well, after 23 years, I've amassed well over 10,000 hours. And I put that experience to work for my patients every day. I personally review, plan, and perform every single treatment on my patients. I don't have students or trainees. As I like to say, I don't get any minions. I do this myself, and if you come to my center, I will be your doctor, and I will be the one taking care of you. So if you've been diagnosed with prostate cancer and you're looking for an advanced precision guided therapy and you want to learn whether or not this might be appropriate for you, call the Cianti Prostate Center or go to our website at ciantiprostatecenter.com and you can call us or you can fill out the link on the site or go to the link at the bottom of this page and we'll reach out to you. My staff will get your information. They'll put it together. I'll review your biopsy information, your images, and we'll set up a personal phone call so I can review your case and determine whether or not you're a good candidate for a precision-guided focal therapy procedure. Thanks, and I look forward to helping you at the Cianti Prostate Center.